So, we have discussed what is modularity and how we can use modularity for community detection and this is this seminal paper that was published by Mark Newman in 2006. If you want to know more about modularity, you can, you can have a look here. Okay? So, the problem uh, of modularity maximization is, uh, is, is, uh, is basically threefold, right? we have already discussed. The first one is resolution limit, the second one is uh, uh, the degeneracy of solution and the third, third one is you know asymptotic growth uh, of the modulity value right so in order to deal with this problem um, along with some other problems people started defining other kind of uh, you know metrics so we define we also defined uh, way back 2014 we defined a metric called permanence okay i i mentioned earlier that you know <laughs> this is the beauty of this uh, of this particular uh, area that you can define uh, you know your own way uh, you, I mean you, you can define this in your own way and you can quantify but you also need to show that your method is uh, better your your metric uh, makes more sense and so on. So we define something called permanence permanence is a metric like modularity but it has certain advantages. So the first problem of modularity is that modularity is a is a global metric, is a graph centric metric, meaning that given a graph and the entire community structure, right, you can measure modularity. If you remember the curve, if you remember the formula of modularity, we basically said that let us take all the communities i from uh, i equals to 1 to mod c and then we have two quantities, one is uh, intra community edges which is denoted by e i i, right. So, the quantity was this, right i equals to 1 to total number of uh, communities then e i i which is the fraction of intra community edges minus a i square which is basically a fraction uh, of two things one is the total number of edges 2 into m and then we also had uh, the sum of degrees of all the nodes in the community. So, given a community structure we can measure this. A permanence on the other hand is basically a local metric. Okay. You can define permanence for a particular vertex, but you cannot define modularity for a particular vertex, you cannot do this. Okay. So, permanence can be defined for a particular vertex, for a particular node. Right? And the other uh, good part uh, and, and, and uh, since this is a local metric, the other good part about local metric is that it can be used when a network changes over time. Right? Let us say you have a network you measure the uh, community structure, you detect the community structure using a metric, some metric and then let us assume that some new nodes are coming in. You do not need to uh, you know uh, you need to you, you do not need to detect the community structure again from the scratch. What you can do? You take the old community structure and then you see where these nodes new nodes are getting added and since your metric is a local metric you type now you try to optimize with respect to those portions of the graph which, which have been changed uh, due to the addition of new nodes and edges. You do not need to optimize your metric on the entire network again. right? So, that would also help you for uh, detecting communities in the evolving graph. So, let us look at uh, the formulation of modularity uh, permanence. Okay? So, I will basically discuss the formulation using two stylized you know cartoon example. So, this is this is the first uh, example. Okay? So, permanence basically is built on two heuristics. So, the first heuristics is as follows. So, let us assume that and remember permanence is again a metric which was defined to quantify the quality of a community structure. Okay? We assume that we already know the community structure and we see whether the structure is better or not. Right? The quality is, 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 is better or not. And later of course, we will use permanence for community detection the way we did for modularity. Okay? So, let us assume that uh, you have this kind of network and you are A okay? and you belong to a community uh, where there are two uh, there, there are four other nodes and this community is a non addictive community. Right? Your friends are not addicted to any, any, any um, bad activities or whatever. Right, so but but you also have friends 
not in the same community but in the other community uh, who are addicted to shoplifting and there are two other friends who are addicted to drug right but you belong to a community which is non addictive and you have four non addictive friends okay since you have so many friends so your external friends meaning your your, your friends from this community and your friend from this community they are insisting me to join uh, their communities okay so in other words you are kind of experiencing a pool an external pool from this community and from this community separately okay you are also experiencing a pool from your own community internal community let us assume that this pool is proportional to the number of neighbors right so the pool is proportional to 3 here and the pool is proportional to 2 here but here the pool is proportional to 4 so as long as you have you have more internal pool compared to the other external pools you are safe you will not move to other communities you will remain remain in your own community so here as you see that your internal pool is 4 proportional to 4 your external pool your maximum external pool is 3 so 4 is greater than 3 so you will not move to shoplifting community you will remain in your own community so the first heuristics is that your total internal connection should be greater than the maximum external connection that you are that that you have with your neighbors with your uh, you know neighbor uh, neighborhood communities that's the first heuristics we we'll capture this heuristics using some uh, quantity okay let's say the say, let's see the second heuristics here assume that you have uh, three friends in the shoplifting group and three friends in the drug group but you do not belong to any community again they are insisting me to join their community uh, but you are not interested what they would do they would internally discuss with each other, each other and probably try to come up with some uh, interesting ideas to convince you to join their community so if you look at the shoplifting groups nodes are highly connected meaning uh, uh, you know meaning they have high understanding whereas in drug groups nodes are not connected at all meaning they don't have high understanding so the probability or the likelihood that shoplifting group will discuss among each other and try to come up with an interesting solution interesting proposal that may convince you to join this community is higher then then the same li likelihood of joining you to this community right so what we are trying to quantify we are trying to quantify how my neighbors are connected right how my neighbors are connected here my neighbors are connected strongly connected but here my neighbors are not connected so how do we quantify this we quantify this using something called clustering coefficient we have discussed earlier clustering coefficient right so we have two heuristics now let's see so so now what's the heuristics here the heuristics is that my internal neighbors should be highly connected if my neighbors are highly connected uh, i will not move to the other community i will remain in my own community because my neighbors are connected so they have high understanding and i am also connected to my neighbors so therefore i will be safe okay how do we capture this we capture this internal Uh, i mean the connect uh, connections within our internal neighbors using clustering coefficient so higher the clustering coefficient higher the chance that you will remain in the same community okay so we combine these two things together to propose a metric called permanence so permanence is a local metric for a particular vertex v we have two quantities this is the first quantity quantity uh, corresponding to the first heuristics second quantity corresponding to the second heuristics let's try to look at the co components here what is iv iv is the number of internal nodes of v what do i mean by internal nodes number of internal connections of v so let's say this is v so iv would be and let, let's say v belongs to this community so iv would be 1 2 3 and 4 iv would be 4 right so first quantity is iv what is this one this is emax v emax v is the maximum external pool right in this case the there are two pools so the first pool is proportional to 
the second pool is proportional to 1 so the maximum pool is 2 so this would be 2 this would be 4 so as long as iv is higher than emax v which correspond to the first heuristics my internal neighbor should be higher than my external neighbors maximum external neighbors right i am stable so th this to so higher this value higher the permanence value okay meaning higher the internal neighbors and lower the external neighbors higher the permanence value and this is normalized by the degree of v because i want that the permanence value should range between say minus 1 to 1 let's say okay or say whatever i mean 0 to 1 or minus 1 to 1 basically minus 1 to 1 so we normalize this by uh, degree so that this quantity will always be between you know 0 to 1 okay so this corresponds to the first heuristics heuristics one and this this is the second heuristics so what is c in v c in v is the internal clustering coefficient of v what do i mean by this i measure the clustering coefficient of v with respect to the neighbors which are internal to the community where v belongs to for example in this case v belongs to this community and what are the internal neighbors this one this one this one and this one so i measure the clustering coefficient with respect to these four nodes right so you see there are total five connections among them right uh, so this would be five and uh, what's the uh, what's the total possible connections between four node six four c two so my internal clustering coefficient would be five by six right so what was the second heuristics higher the internal connection higher the permanence value so what i do here is basically i subtract this internal connection from one so you can think of this quantity as a penalty okay so now think about it higher the clustering coefficient lower this penalty right and is a minus right lower this penalty and higher the permanence value okay clustering coefficient ranges between 0 to 1 so if clustering coefficient is 1 then this would be 0 permanence would be maximum so when we will get the maximum permanence value we will get the maximum permanence value when there is no external edge no external connection all internal connections so therefore this iv would be dv so this would be 1 remember when this is 0 when no external connection this would be 0 then it would be 1 by 0 right so we, in that case we basically say that you know let's assume that when when emax v is 0 we basically consider this as 1 so that we can compute it easily otherwise 1 by 0 you know undefined and so on we try to avoid that situation so when a node is node has only internal connections no external connections and all the internal labors are connected then this would be 1 this would be 0 this would be 1 so 1 minus 0 permanence would be 1 okay so let's look at the limiting uh, and and then when we measure the permanence for a particular vertex we take the average permanence value of all the vertices right and that would give you the permanence of the graph so sum of permanence values divided by the number of vertices so the beauty about permanence is that it also tells you the quality of the community structure okay so if permanence per, per, permanence ranges between minus 1 to 1 if it tends to 1 it tends to be 1 then you have uh, a very strong community structure like a ring of clicks and and interestingly if you use permanence maximization you will see that these clicks can be detected at separate separate communities in contrast to the modularity maximization where modularity maximization tends to group uh, small communities into 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 big communities but here you can detect small communities as, as well when you have a structure like this a grid right which does not have any community structure i mean you can either consider each node as a community or the entire network as a community so because grid doesn't have any community structure right permanence tends to be zero okay now and if you wrongly assign a vertex to a community right say let's say let's say you have a network like this okay 
one, two, three, four, five, six, and you know that there are two commutes C one and C two, but you assign uh, you assign node one, node four, and node two in one community, uh, node three, node five, and node six in another community, right? Like a random group like this, right? Which doesn't make any sense. Wrong wrong grouping. It tends to be minus one. Okay, so from the value of the permanence, you uh, basically, you know, you basically judge the uh, the the I mean whether a network is at all qualified to be uh, to to pass into a commutation algorithm. So this is permanence. Now, you know, this is an example. We have already discussed an example. Now, you, how we can use permanence for commutation detection? Okay, so we. you know propose uh, an algorithm called max perm which maximizes the permanence and it it basically uses the same strategy the same strategy that we use for leuven algorithm so we start so at every pass if you remember the leuven algorithm at every pass we have two steps modularity maximization and community aggregation in this case permanence maximization and community aggregation so at every pass we start with uh, Uh, with assigning nodes into different communities then you start grouping you keep on grouping and then you collapse groups into super nodes you create a super network you keep on doing this thing until you see that permanence value decreases it's called permanence maximization so in our paper we showed that uh, if you use permanence maximization you will get better community structure compared to the modularity maximization you will also be able to uh, reduce the a problem of resolution limit because permanence maximization can also uh, detect small communities okay uh, for example in, in case of ring of clicks you can detect each, each click as a separate community we also showed uh, theoretically that it, redu it re reduces the problem of degeneracy of solution and, and asymptotic growth right but of course it it, uh, it it is not able to completely overcome these problems but these problems will be reduced significantly if you use Uh, permanence maximization okay so you can you can uh, detect uh, small size communities you can reduce the problem of resolution limit and degeneracy of solutions but the problem here is that in case of permanence since this is a vertex centric metric you actually need to measure permanence for all the vertices and that is time taking and the other problem is that clustering coefficient is order of n square why i mean order of d square and and the maximum value of d is n Sort of n square. So if you if you can come up with a better way to detect uh, to to uh, you know uh, to measure clustering coefficient, then max perm would be a better metric, better algorithm. Okay. So this is all about uh, disjoint community detection. In the follow-up lectures, we will discuss overlapping community de detection. We'll we'll uh, we'll discuss two three algorithms in details, and then. we uh, we you know end this chapter by discussing uh, how i mean how you can evaluate a uh, community structure okay thanks mm -hmm.